Hello and welcome to Core Finance. I am Matt Brown and I'm joined today by Ricardo Evangelista, who is Senior Executive Officer at Active Trades. How are you today, Ricardo? Morning, Matt. Uh, very well, thank you. Good, good. Well, thank you very much for coming on today uh, with obviously Active Trade Trades. Um, now, the FX markets have been actually quite active over the summer. There's been a lot of trading opportunity, there's been a lot of news flow coming out. Usually we see a quiet summer and, and, and markets mm. really not moving too much. Um, some currency pairs are now stuck in ranges, but we have seen some breakouts and we're going to talk through a few of the major currencies this morning, talk about where they are at the moment, how they've got there and potentially where mm. they could go um, in the coming month. Sure. So I think starting off with the dollar, um, just talk us through your, your views on the dollar over the summer. Um, well, these are interesting times for, for the dollar. Um, we've seen uh, a couple of interest rate um, rises, um, which were sort of expected. Um, now, the great expectation um, lies on the, on the tone, uh, so on the tone of any future announcements and uh, uh, more than the actual contents, because I think the market is a, is a, a good expectation that up to a certain extent may already be priced into the value uh, of the dollar. Um, today uh, we have uh, uh, the, the Jackson Hole um, you know, Central Bank Central Bank uh, Summit. Yes. Um, so it will be interesting to to wait and uh, and hear what uh, Janet Yellen is going to have to say. Is she going to give any indication that uh, you know uh, there'll be a further uh, in, you know um, interest rate mm -hmm. increase, or is that in the cards, or will she dampen the, the spirits by saying that actually you know. Um, Wage growth is not that uh, that good yet. Uh, you know, inflation is not so great. Um, maybe we need to uh, to take a more careful approach. So, um, rega uh, regarding this, it, it depends on what side uh, of the spectrum she will approach uh, in the issue. So, if she goes in very carefully, that can have. Uh, you know, uh, an impact by uh, leading to the sale of the dollar. Uh, if she is a little bit more hawkish about it and says, no, we're fairly confident, you know, <laughs> probably not uh, with these uh, words and expression, but uh, if she comes across as being more um, positive about it all and, uh, and, uh, and the current state of the American economy, then we may see uh, an impact on the sentiment of investors and, and uh, as a consequence, um, a further rise in the dollar against the other the other major currencies. And, and why do you think that we, we've seen over the summer, certainly the dollar index, um, and we'll come on to the, the euro dollar in a second, selling off um, fairly aggressively. It's had a bit of a bounce of late, but mm. what do you think the major drivers were behind that sell-off? Yeah. Um, I think the major drive the major driver behind that uh, sell-off has been the, the current political environment so um, we've had some um, instability uh, we know that uh, president trump is quite trigger happy with his uh, with his twitter messages yes very much so, um, so it's been it's been uh, hitting the knees of investors you know testing their reflexes <laughs> and uh, by the looks of it the markets are still quite uh, healthy in that sense so so there's been uh, quite a lot of reaction, um, instability, political instability, uh, both internal and also um, at geopolitical level. Um, you know, with um, with his um, very gallopant attitude towards North Korea, uh, that hasn't helped. Um, it helped the yen, for example, uh, and uh, and the safe haven um, instruments, but but and the dollar suffered uh, quite a lot as a consequence. So. Um, I would say that um, the geopolitical environment, uh, with a special emphasis on uh, President Trump's uh, style of communication, mm -hmm. probably has been the biggest driver behind it. Understood. And in contrast, the euro has, has gone from strength to strength. Um, would you say that was, I mean, in initially the Macron effect, 
and stability within Europe. Um, and actually, the macro data has, has been fairly strong from Europe. So do you, th do you think exactly. that's a, a key driver? I would, I, would totally, I would totally agree with that, yes. Um, I think the, the, the figures that we've seen coming out uh, in relation to the Eurozone's uh, economy uh, and its p performance have been fairly positive. I even yesterday we saw a composite um, the PMI for manufacturing and, uh, and trade looking very healthy and uh, we saw that the Euro gained uh, some terrain, especially against sterling. Uh, so, whilst on the dollar side, the main driver behind, um, behind it has been politics and geopolitics, uh, more, uh, to be more precise, um, on the euro side is more the fundamentals of the economy. So, um, the economy is looking solid in the eurozone, good figures, good growth, uh, unemployment as well is dropping. Uh, which was a big, a big drag on the on the single currencies uh, economies, um, and also we have perhaps a more positive uh, outlook uh, for for the eurozone and for the currency itself as well. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, if fairly soon we see a, a, t a tapering on the on the quantitative easing mm -hmm. on the purchase uh, yeah, programs. And that will help push potentially the euro higher. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and also it's interesting to see that the, the, the healthy outlook for the euro and, uh, and, uh, and the rise uh, it's had uh, recently is not, does not seem to be having a negative effect and an impact on the exports. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, so yeah. yeah. I mean, that may take a few months to, to probably follow through and certainly the likes of Germany will probably be the hardest hit. On the, on the exactly, the, the great the exporters, yes, yes, Understood. exactly. And uh, that moves us on probably nicely to, to the pound, which uh, at the moment, or I think as of yesterday, was at eight-month lows against the euro. Um, there's a lot going on uh, with the mm. pound. We had, had a bit of a rally, um, certainly against um, the dollar. So cable rallied up to, I think, 132 uh, a few weeks ago. But really since then, it's, it's fallen out of favour, not only against the dollar, but also against the strengthening Yes. Euro. What do you think the major factors are for, for mm. valuing the pound at the moment? And could we see it drop more in value, or do you think that will, will turn around? Um, well, um, several analysts uh, are um, are looking into the possibility of parity between uh, pounds and um, and the euro uh, by the end of this year. Um, I think I think it was. Uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, mm -hmm. who yesterday came out, someone from J.P. Morgan who yesterday came out uh, saying that uh, it was realistic to expect that parity. Uh, the, main, the main reasons for it are, uh, on one hand, um, the signs that come out the, from the economy uh, still not that positive. So inflation is stubbornly uh, low. Uh, and despite, uh, and despite the, the expectations that we've had for a while, uh, it remains quite low. Um, wages, wages are quite low as well. There, there's no real wage growth. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, the outlook for the economy is not as positive, perhaps, as it was uh, even a few months ago. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, we also have some political instability. Um, which, which cannot be discounted as a major factor here. Yeah, certainly Brexit uh, on the horizon. Exactly. Is Brexit, uh, not just, uh, even more than Brexit, perhaps the way it's being handled, mm -hmm. the, the process, I, I, th I think everybody is you know, prepared now to accept that Brexit is a reality, it's, it's coming, uh, but the way it's being, uh, it's being handled has not been the greatest, at least the communication that reaches us does not paint a pretty picture uh, of uh, internal struggles, you know, and uh, it's, not, it's not great. And, um, and also we had, for example, the, the snap election. Uh, the result, as we all know, wasn't uh, what everybody expected at the outset when, when it was first called for. Uh, so, so I think in the case of the pound, it's a mix between uh, sort of uh, anemic behaviour, 
on the economy side, mm -hmm. and uh, and political instability and uncertainty uh, in relation to what the future will be like. I mean, what will be the outcome of the Brexit negotiations? Will we see a hard Brexit? Mm -hmm. will, will it be sort of a cliff mm -hmm. jump or, or, or will it be uh, something more uh, more uh, gradual? Uh, well, we'll see, we'll see, but it's definitely uh, having an impact uh, in the pound and, and I think it's the main driver behind its drop against the other major currencies. Understood. And, and finally, let's briefly look at um, the yen. And certainly, against the dollar, it's been anchored around this kind of 110 mm. level. And actually, it's quite, quite range-bound. But you already mentioned the North Korea and the safe haven um, attraction of the, the Japanese yen in, in these cases. Uh, just quickly talk us through, I mean, do, do, do you think the yen or the dollar yen pair, where, where can this go from here, let's say, anchored around the 110 level? Um. Well, um, if if um, if President um, Trump maintains uh, the current uh, the current attitude and and uh, and the quite gallopant uh, um, you know uh, pose and, uh, and 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 keeps threatening other countries, uh, it's quite likely that, as you said, in the yen will uh, will gain in value because it's seen as a safe haven. Um, asset. Uh, so investors uh, in times of trouble, so we saw when uh, at the peak of the North Korea uh, issue, um, when President Trump pretty much threatened to, to bomb uh, North Korea, there was, a, there was a, an upwards movement uh, on the yen. Um, so I think that will be the major driver really. Uh, at this stage, because we all know that the, the Japanese economy uh, hasn't been moving significantly despite um, all the efforts, uh, economics and all that. Uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't moved significantly in the last few years. Um, I don't see uh, that changing. Uh, if anything, it may change for the worse uh, because of some very particular the conditions in a country, you know, aging population and all that. Uh, so I think, I think the yen and the dollar for the moment are quite likely to stay within the present, the current range, mm -hmm. uh, safeguarding that there's no major uh, unsettling situation, uh, you know, war or maybe uh, President Trump uh, being threatening towards uh, uh, North K uh, Korea again. Uh, so I think I think it's um, quite likely that will remain within the current range. Understood. Well, lots to take home there. Very very insightful on the on all four currencies. Um, so if viewers want to check out more, obviously go to Active Trade and they can find out more um, about your company and and your ideas. But uh, for the moment, thank you very much for joining us today, Ricardo. It's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure was all mine, Matt. Thank you very much.